All right, let's bring in former Alabama oh, quarterback is. and prolific golfer, as we found out down there at the senior ball, our good friend John Parker Wilson. JP Dub, what's up? Guys, not much, man. How y'all doing? Doing great, man. It's football season, so you know we're kicking it good over here. Week two, right? Or is this week three? I don't know. No, it's no. week, no, it's, yeah. it's week three, it John Parker. There's no such thing as week zero. There's no such thing as patient zero. There's no such thing as pre-boarding on an airplane. You're the first people to board. Thank you. Thank you. Why does it need to be said? I don't know why we do this. Let's bring a little bit of logic. That's why English is the hardest no language. We do this to ourselves. See what you started, John Parker. Anyways. I, I, I'm right there with you, though. I'm right there with you. Yeah, it, it's, it's the truth, though. It was good seeing you down at the, uh, the Senior Bowl uh, uh, Charity Golf Classic. That was a lot of fun as well, man. Uh, you know, you quarterbacks, y'all can really hit the uh, golf ball pretty well. Yeah, the problem with my golf game, though, is I can hit it really well, like, 30% of the time. That's great in baseball. Not so good in golf, though. So, you know, this time of year, you kind of put the golf clubs up. We'll, 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 we'll work on it for next year. That's exactly right. A lot of mental. You get better on the mental here. You know, that's, that, that's how we work it. But your overall thoughts, I mean, I'm mean, obviously going to ask you about Alabama. You watch Georgia absolutely just pants Oregon in front of everybody. What are kind of some overlying thoughts that you have going into this next weekend? Uh, some things that you're intrigued storyline-wise from last weekend. Yeah, you know, I thought it was, um, you know, one of the biggest games of the week, Georgia versus Oregon, and then they just completely go out there and undress them. I mean, you score a touchdown every time you touch the ball. Um, it's pretty impressive. You know, the only time they didn't score is at the end when they put it on the knee. So for Stetson Bennett to go out there, um, you know, catapult the way up the Heisman um, odds right now, just kind of picking up where he left off. I think it was a big question mark for them was, you know, was Stetson Bennett going to be able to continue to improve and 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 and, and be the quarterback that, you know, we kind of saw last year. And I think he answered a lot of questions. Um, you know, I think Alabama looked really good. Um, obviously, you know, against Utah State was um, not the best opponent, but I think came out and kind of took care of business. And then, you know, you got, you got everybody else in the SEC with um, Arkansas and, you know, Tennessee, Florida. Billy Napier had a great game against, um, who did they play, Utah. Utah I mean, yeah. they're, they're, the, the SEC to me is, is shaping up to be a pretty crazy year. Yeah, and as, speaking of Florida, and I mean, look, you know, we, we look at Bryce Young, obviously NFL prospect, elite. C.J. Stroud has elite ability. I'm just looking at a guy like Anthony Richardson, John Parker. There's, there's not a lot of Bryces out there walking around. There's not a not, lot of C.J.'s, but there is sure as hell not a lot of Anthony Richardson's running around. If that guy can continue to improve, because he looks like a natural thrower of the ball to me, John Parker. He doesn't look like a guy that's just out there, you know, throwing the fastball on the swing pass 100 miles per hour. I just, I feel like his potential is unbelievably elite. No question. And I think that's the thing. <clears throat> As a quarterback, right, you've got to be able to throw different passes. You just yep. can't throw a 90-mile fastball every single time. You've got to be able to throw the finesse pass, move in the pocket. He's got great size. So I, I think you're right. His his passing ability is what's going to set him apart and what's what has improved, right? Last year, uh, we played Florida down in the swamp. We didn't get to see him. He was injured. But this is a guy that's came in with a ton of hype. And I think, you know, having a new coach and a new change of scenery um, helped him out a lot. I mean, that was a huge win for Florida. Huge. What was uh, Utah State was seven. I mean, you know, they kind of been on the ropes. And you get a new coach coming there, win at home like that at the end. Um, that's kind of stuff you build on all season long. You get some confidence. And it's great to have confidence early on and then, and then try to build on it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and a guy like Anthony Richardson, I mean, he's got all the tools. Um, I, think, I think Florida's going to be scary. I think Tennessee and Florida both are going to be scary over in the East this year. For sure. And I, I do want to ask you, you brought up Stetson. Uh, John Parker is a guy who's, who's been the, the new guy that's starting his first game. You've also been the guy that went through the offseason as the guy, that went through fall camp as the guy. Stetson Bennett's already a hero. I mean, he's already won the national championship for Georgia at the quarterback position. He is legitimately playing with house money, and it really looked like he was playing with house money. And I mean that complimentary. I mean, he was making plays outside of the pocket, which we've seen Stetson extend the play, but he just looked like there was really nothing to lose because there isn't. You're already a hero. The odds are already stacked against you, which to me makes you a very dangerous man. The mailman. Very dangerous. You're exactly right because... When you're the guy and nobody's questioning it, I mean, the, he went in that championship. He's going to be their starting quarterback, right? He doesn't yeah. have to look yeah. over his shoulder. He could go out and throw five interceptions, and guess what? Nobody's going to be saying, let's bring in the backup. For a quarterback, that frees you up. They'll let you mm -hmm. go play. You don't have to think about, okay, you know, it's 
I'm, I'm 18 for 28 so far in the game. Like you're not, you're not thinking about those things. It frees you up and lets you just go, go play. And Stetson Bennett, I mean, he, he did some, some unusual things against Oregon. I mean, moving the pocket, he had a couple like trickery plays. These are things that you don't do. You know, you just take a sack and go down and move on, kick a field goal, not the end of the world. Right. But when you're freed up and you got nothing to worry about, um, you can be a dangerous, you can be a dangerous player and you're exactly right. It's house money in a good way. It's not like, you know, he's going out there and just, just, you know, free will in it. He's going out there and, and I think being the player that he wants to be and that he can be. Yeah. I think it's true. Little Baker Mayfield in him a little bit. A little bit. A little, little bit. A little bit. Look, I'm not saying he is, but the, the list bit. of Alabama quarterbacks is really the most prestigious in the country. I mean, you go all the way back to Bart Starr and Joe Namath and Kenny Stabler, John my Parker father-in-law. Wilson. John Parker Wilson has the honor of being on that list. My father-in-law, Richard Todd. But really, this this most recent quartet, when you think about Jalen Hurts and Tua Tagovailoa and Mac Jones, you know, it really is unprecedented what Alabama's been able to do. And then Bryce Young, the only one out of all that group to win the Heisman Trophy. We both thought C.J. Stroud might be the odds-on favorite coming into the season to win the Heisman Trophy. And now I'm looking around. I know we've only played one game, but do you think Bryce Young can win back-to-back Heisman Trophies? I don't know, man. It's so hard to do. And his numbers last year were so gaudy. I think that's the biggest thing that he's got to face is trying to throw for 47 touchdowns again and 4,800 yards passing. Um, only had seven, or seven interceptions, but you know what? Throwing five touchdowns in the first game and running another one for 100 yards, that kind of helps. <laughs> it's a good helps start. It out early. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty solid start. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think he can do it. Uh, Bryce is a special, special talent, man. He, he, he can make all the throws. It was fun to watch him run the ball like he did against Utah State. Didn't have to do it a lot last year. They didn't ask him to do it. And, and I think he kind of showed that, hey, I can do it. Y'all don't forget, yeah. I still got some wheels. I can still move, but Bryce, y'all, his vision is unbelievable. It's wild. The way the way he he finds receivers downfield. I think it was a third down play last week. Trayshawn Holds coming across the middle. He has to move in the pocket. He starts to escape, and I don't I don't know how he found the guy, but he does it week in and week out. And 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 when you have the vision like that, like he's a smaller guy, right? I think his whole life he's been having to move in the pocket and find open guys and and, and navigate different windows. It probably used to be a weakness of this, but now, y'all, you know, this is a strength. And 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 the way this team's going to set up, the way we're going to play defense around him and give him, he's going to have a lot of chances, right? Will yeah. Anderson, Dallas Turner, these guys are going to get off the field, so he's going to have a lot of chances to put up some numbers, um, you know. And and then the the receivers that we've got now it was a question mark kind of coming to the season, but I think this first game, Jermaine Burton, Treshawn Holden, they mm-hmm. we've caught the ball really well in the backfield. I think he's going to have a lot of chances to put up the numbers that he did last year. Yeah. 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 yeah, this early in the season, you know, we hate to just pencil in Alabama and Georgia in the SEC championship, but look, it's looking like it could pencil be heading for in, that dog. showdown. And it could be more <laughs> epic, John Parker, than even last season when you look at the way things have started. Looking over to Athens, beyond the 49-3 to score, you know, what really stood out from you from Georgia against Oregon? I think being able to come off a national championship and do it in week one, right? Mm. Um it, it, it's hard to do. It's hard to keep that momentum going throughout an off season, especially the layoff that Georgia had from their last national championship to now. It's a big deal over there, y'all. I've, I spent a lot of time in Atlanta. My wife's from Atlanta, so I know these Georgia fans really well. And for them, for this team to come out and just, you know, reload and pick up right where they left off last year, to me, that was impressive, right? They've got talent. We know they've recruited well, but just mentally being able to come out there against, you know, a, a big team, Oregon, that's a big game. Was, that was you know, Alabama's used to start off with big, big games like that, but I think it it sets the tone. It does a really good job of setting the tone for the rest of the season. Um, and they were able to answer the call, and it was an it was an impressive thing to watch. And and um, you know, they, people have been talking about Tennessee and Florida in the East, and can they challenge Georgia? Um, you know, you put it back there on that board right there. I think Georgia Georgia's gonna you know be in be in Atlanta this this um, come December. If you like that content, go ahead and subscribe because we're going to be balling every day on Crane & Company. Hit that like button while you're at it and go ahead and smash it like Derrick Henry on an ISO run.